This is an interesting clip uh, of Trump. I, I feel like since we watched that one clip of, of Kamala answering the question on trans rights, I feel like it's only fair that we watch this clip of Trump today talking about how he uh, this is wants to fix schools and somehow just brings trans people into that, that conversation. I say reading, writing, and arithmetic. Wait, hold no on. trans. Yeah, God, geez, what a piece of shit. Trump pivoted back to trans kids when asked how he would. Weed. Don't ever apologize for that. What the hell? Sorry, I just saw that. Don't ever apologize for that. Yap away. That's what this is about. Your guys' yapping inspires me. Okay. Improve schools. I say reading, writing, and arithmetic. No transgender, no operations. You know, they <laughs> reading, writing, arithmetic, getting rid of the transgenders. There are some places. What a piece of shit. Yeah, they exist. Your boy leaves to school, comes back a girl. <laughs> okay, true. without parental consent. Mm -hmm. No, what that's not that true. That's not true. Before we're joined by Amara Jones, founder and CEO of Trans Lash. Anyway, that's that's. Well, actually, was there another part of this interview? It's just, it's wild. Like, so that, that's, that's the contrast right there. Like Kamala was asked a question about trans rights and she said she wanted to follow the law. She obviously could have been an ally and come out unabashedly supporting the trans community with her, her answer, but she didn't. She played the middle. Whereas Trump is obviously just way further to the right than her on that Kamala is trying to run to the right on it but he's further to the right he's asked a question about fixing schools and he brings that culture war shit into it and the thing that's really dumb is running on this culture war stuff is not helping them it, that's why they lost there was supposed to be that red wave in the midterms 2022 didn't happen and polling showed it was because Republicans were looked at as being very weird. That's why Kamala and Tim Walls started calling them weird like we were calling them weird for the past few years. It's because there was actual polling in 2022 to show that people thought they were being fucking weird. Even like Republicans, suburban moms were like, this is weird to like hyper focus on trans kids. Like my, my daughter has like a trans friend that comes over to my house every day after school. Like they, they all were like, this is just ridiculous. And that's why like they flipped like two seats or whatever in 20. I forget exactly what it was, but it's like, it was no, there was no red wave. They're canceling reading classes to teach transgenderism. That's true. That's, that's why, that's why I don't know how to read. <laughs> I never learned how to read. And that's cause they told they taught me I was a girl. <laughs> Oh my God! They're they're not only are they doing it in the prisons, transgender operations on illegal aliens that are in prison in the schools, in the schools. It's so fucked. And I'm sorry anybody in chat ever has to go through any type of feelings that you don't exist, or ever have had to go through that feeling. Because of people like Trump. Uh, this is an interesting, um, interesting stat I got from Majority Report today. Trump considering withhold, or not a stat, but just a, a potential policy. Uh, Trump considering withholding federal grants for police forces who don't take part in mass deportations. He already did stuff like this. Like this is stuff he did when he was uh, in office. And like, like I said, when we were watching that video last night of what his excuse me, mass deportation policy could look like, that's what it's going to be. There, there aren't enough Border Patrol and ICE agents to take care of it. He's going to be like, yo, National Guard, yo, police, get in here, start raiding homes. That, that one ICE agent in that video last night who was like, oh, we're not going to raid the whole van of illegals. We're just here for the one criminal guy. He was only saying that because he was on TV. That's what they historically do raiding the entire vans, entire businesses. And and Trump's going to get the police to do it. They're going to be busting in people's houses. And like, and like the guy said, that was his old head of ice. You don't have to separate the families. You can just deport them all. 
pretty much his direct quote. You can deport the whole family. These are ne like literal Nazis. Domestic Nazis. Because as we've said, when it comes to foreign policy, it's 99% Hitler, 100% Hitler. But like, like Trump is the domestic Nazi and the people around him. And the funny thing is, is like going back to the, uh, the, the transgender conversation, Trump's not anti-trans himself, nor is he anti-abortion himself. He was a registered Democrat for a long time, and there's like those old quotes of him being like, oh, if I were to ever run for president, I'd run as a Republican because they're all so stupid. But like, he said before, like, I think it was back in 2015 when he was asked, like before he even became president, like, Caitlyn Jenner, if she comes into Ma Lago, is she allowed to use whatever bathroom she wants? He said, yeah, of course. I don't care. <laughs> and then, uh, same thing with abortion. He was the one out here like, yo, I'm trying to get the Republicans to add more months. We need a couple more months. No third trimester, but we need a couple more months. And I like in vitro fertilization. And they're like, shut the fuck up, Donald. We are not adding more months. We don't want abortion to exist. We want women to die. We want the infant mortality rate to keep increasing, which it has, as we looked at that stat yesterday. Infant mortality rate has increased since they repealed Roe v. Wade. I thought they cared about saving children's lives. I don't know. But, but like, Trump himself isn't... I think he is truly anti-immigrant. 100% he is. He is a racist piece of shit. And more than that, he's somebody that wants to exploit people. And as I've said, the more that they just keep demonizing immigrants and not having any type of meaningful change on immigration policy the immigration system then people are still always going to come over here illegally and people like trump can then continue to exploit them for cheaper wages than they would pay uh, an american worker but like on some of those other issues like trump like truly isn't like a demon but it's the people around him the people in his cabinet those are the ones that are going to enact the hyper anti-trans agendas to, to try to continue repealing abortion uh, nationwide. Kids can't read or rap, but they can trans. Okay, going to true. Um, another stat, economy grows at 2.8%. Job numbers stronger than expected as ex expert, ex experts declare soft landing achieved and that's like the soft landing post covid just like as we've talked about watching democracy now how of course inflation spiked during covid and then it came back down everywhere um ours it came down quicker than other places relative to our our gdp spending and others gdp spending um so just all this stuff just to combat the whole uh, combat the whole bite inflation the economy's horrible it, it inflation is still too high for sure, but it's come down and it's gone back down to a level to where it was at before COVID. And anybody that says, oh, inflation was better under Trump, that was literally Obama. That was Obama's uh, economy that Trump inherited and it continued to get better. And then COVID came along and fucked it up. But it didn't completely continue to get better because Trump, what did he do? He added the most amount to the national debt in history with his biggest tax cuts to the rich in history dude there's a double whammy there two of the big things in history happened with that one thing but uh but as we know like when it comes to inflation cost of living wages have stayed stagnant since the 70s whereas cost of living has has rose exponentially which is why when we were reacting to Kamala's speech last night, it's like, yo, just like say actual good things that are gonna materially change people's lives. Talk about raising the minimum wage. Talk about a public option, something that even Joe Biden ran on in 2020 because everybody was talking about Medicare for all, Bernie Sanders. So like Joe Biden had to run on, on public option. Now we have Kamala being out here being like, oh, I hate Medicare for all. I, I regret ever even saying that. Meanwhile, we have Kamala out here saying like, maybe like three things on like, the economy like price gouging that's good and then like like combating price gouging and uh like uh her this was small business on whatever that's like not th that great but um the thing that she mentioned about uh adding in-home care on medicaid or sorry medicare for for seniors stuff like that's good but you talk about something like 
public option or Medicare for all, then you don't even need to talk about adding in-home care to that stuff. It's going to be added to it. But like her, her speech is just all last night. It was just, here's like two or three, like, okay things on the economy. And then just, here's how I'm going to be the most right wing centrist candidate, bipartisan candidate reaching across the aisle. I can't wait to have a Republican in my cabinet. Yeah, what are your thoughts on the economy? I think transgender people should follow the law. Yeah. How do you feel about Palestine? Like, all these people dying. You know, I feel bad for them. But, like, you know, people care about their grocery prices here. Literally, like, something she actually did in that town hall. She literally was like, yeah, I know that it's sad that they're dying in Palestine. But that's not the only issue. People are worried about their grocery prices here. Like, you're so fucking stupid. Like, there's actually, like, ways you could say stuff like that without sounding like an insensitive demon but even like there's even when you try to mask it up it's like there's no like can't forget about the palestinian children dude and women and children just palestine in general like i said i just think that out of the two of them she's the only one that through immense pressure grassroots organization will be able to be pushed to somewhat of an arms embargo or something it will never happen with trump and it probably won't with her either but maybe we could try Oh, fuck. I still just feel so shitty, dude, about voting today. <laughs>